So there's our 1%, and they have two more zeros in front of them. I mean, so what? So we're all kind of walking towards him, right? Becoming like him, being attracted to him. So what if we just, with humility, said, let's just walk together? We talked for just over two hours. And, we, and they kept going off to Joseph Smith and prophets and apostles and apostates and things. And I, got, and I just told him, I said, you know, I'm, not, I'm a really simple guy. So I get confused easily. And I don't really know that much stuff about that stuff. Do you have to know a lot about Mormonism to talk to Mormons about Jesus? Who do you have to know a lot about to talk to Mormons about Jesus? Jesus. Do you have to know a lot about Islam to talk to Muslims about Jesus? Now, I mean, no, it's helpful because then you, I think it's because you honor them. So they said, would you read the Book of Mormon if, you, if we gave it to you? And I said, I've read it before, but I actually haven't read it for like 20 years. I'll reread it. And so I'm actually currently reading the Book of Mormon. You know why? Because I want to honor them when they come to visit me next Wednesday. We have an appointment. When they come to my house next Wednesday, I want to be able to say, I read the book. And I already asked them, I said, do you think if there was no Book of Mormon, would the Bible have been enough? And it was so funny. They both went yes, no at the same time. <laughs> did you hear the question? If the Book of Mormon had never come, would the Bible have been enough? One elder said yes, exactly the same time the other elder said no, and they both, I think they don't usually do that. They don't, they're well trained. And they're like, and then the older elder who said no said no, 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 he said no to this elder. Friend. No, it wouldn't be enough. I said, so the Bible's not enough, so let me read the Book of Mormon, and then we'll discuss the Bible. And they go, well, why would we discuss the Book of Mormon? I said, well, because the Bible is what I believe in, and you believe in the Bible too, so let's just start there, and let's focus on Jesus, and we'll just do that again next week, and so they come by next Wednesday. Now, it takes a certain kind of thinking to do that, doesn't it? If you're thinking that I'm found there lost, which might be true. I'm not saying that's not true. I'm not a universalist. But if you're thinking I'm found there lost, I have truth, they don't have truth. I know Jesus, they don't know Jesus. I'm a Christian, they're not a Christian. And I'm going to win them over, even though they're trying to win you over. Then what you have is this right? Which is most, what most people have with Mormons and Muslims and people of other faith. You just have this, and then we call it apologetics, and we have a great fight, and it doesn't work. But you feel kind of good about yourself because you defended the faith. Well, what if it's not about defending the faith? What if, it's, what if it's actually about loving people, like honoring them? I mean, do you think these two guys aren't amazing? Have you ever seen these guys? They're incredible. They're incredible. Not they could be if they know Jesus. They are right now incredible people. They're made by God, they're amazing. You ought to honor them. You ought to, you ought to just tell them, you ought to have a hug a Mormon day. Like you see those guys run by, you just run out and hug them and just say, you guys are amazing. I mean, do you guys do that? Do you guys do that? No. I, they're incredible. So what if we just kind of calmed ourselves down a little bit? We don't know everything. We're not so cool. We're not so good. Other people have some truth. Do you think Mormons have some truth? Of course they have some truth. Muslims have some truth. I mean, truth is God's. It's not owned by Christianity or the vineyard or this church. It's God's truth. I gave a talk uh, about three, uh, June, so whatever, June, three months ago to a group called the WPO. Have you ever heard of WPO? It's like YPO, WPO. It's really important people that make a lot of money. And so anyway, if you have to I have a quazillion dollars to be part of these uh, Young Presidents Association or, or WPO is World Presidents Organization. So the Rocky Mountain region had a, their quarterly gathering, and they asked me to come speak to them. So it's about 100 really, really rich guys and wives in this room at Denver University, DU downtown Denver, and they asked me to come speak on the Middle East. So I told the organizers, I really don't speak much about the Middle East. They said, well, yeah, but oh, your books are about the, you're like a Middle Eastern expert, it says on your book. Well, I mean, I wrote, I go, I wrote that. I mean, so, <laughs> it's, I said that I'm a Middle Eastern expert. I don't know if I am. I just made that up because the publisher said, what are you? I'm like, I'm just a guy named Carl. I mean, not anything, really. So they I like, how about a Middle Eastern expert? Okay, I'm a Middle Eastern expert. So they said, well, what do you want to talk about? I said, Jesus. They go, oh, no, this isn't a Christian event. I said, I don't get it. They said, well, you just said Jesus, and we said it's not a Christian event. I said, I don't, I don't understand. They go, what? And then I said, what, what, what? They go, I'm so confused. No, I said, no, I'm confused. They said, no, why? I always said, you can't talk about Jesus because it's not a Christian event. And you said, what? I don't understand. And I go, I don't understand. I don't get how you connected those two. And they go, what? <laughs> Wait, excuse me. Mm. I mean, you guys don't think Jesus was a Christian, do you? Was Jesus a Christian? Was his religion, did Jesus say, I am 
a Christian. I've come because all religions are no good. I've come to start a new one and named after myself. Called, we'll call it Christ, Christianity, Christianity. You know, it's me, Christ, Jesus Christ, the Christ, and Christianity. And we'll get rid of the old religions. We'll start a new one. And then I'll be the founder of that. If you look in the encyclopedia under Jesus Christ, it actually says the founder of Christianity. It's mistaken. Do you agree? Did Jesus come to start a new religion? No. I mean, there's nothing about that. So I just, I, I can, see, you can't, you can't help people see truth until you first confuse them, which is really my gifting. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> Kirk, what do you think? I have the, gifting of, the gift of confusion. So I, I, I purposely try to confuse people first because, see, everybody thinks they know what's going on. People think Jesus is the Christian guy, Moses and the Torah and stuff were the Jewish guys in the book, and then you got Muhammad and the Quran, they're the Muslim guys, and you got a bunch of who, all kinds of things that are Hindu guys, and then Buddhas, there's really no God, but Buddha's the Buddhist, Buddhist guy. And, you know, and then there's the people that don't believe in God, people that are confused, and we have agnostics and deists and atheists. And everybody has a nice little box. Well, I like to come in, I like to come in and just say, oh, no, 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 those boxes, who, made, who said that? Who made up those rules? There, I'm just saying there's a guy named Jesus who was a Palestinian Jewish guy, lived 2,000 years ago from a little town called Nazareth up north, kind of just up the hill from the Sea of Galilee. He walked around with sandals and stuff and said a bunch of crazy things. I don't know if you read it or not, but it's crazy. I mean, it's just wild stuff. Like things that nobody would ever think of saying, like love your enemies. Not reconcile or get along with them, but love your enemies. I mean, who would say that? Who would say that? And then, so I said, to the, anyway, I convinced these guys that I would talk sort of about the Middle East, but a lot about Jesus. And so they said, okay. So I, my wife, Chris, and I went to this thing, and I get up and give a 45-minute lecture, really about Jesus. But Jesus was Middle Eastern, so we kind of, you know, he's walking around the Middle East. So I kind of threw the Middle East in there. But mo most of these guys who are not Christians, are not believers, they're, um, actually a lot of them were Jewish. I had... I had person, then we had dinner afterwards. I had person after person after person, like almost all of them, come and say two things. One, almost everybody said, I've, I've not heard the name Jesus mentioned so much ever in any talk in my whole life. <laughs> and then secondly, a bunch of the Jewish uh, brothers and sisters, you know, men and women that were there, said to me, you know, are you Christian? And then, because that also confused me, because I don't call myself, I call myself a follower of Jesus, and I say, well, that's my religious background, so if I was going to be religious, if I was going to be religious, I would be a Christian religious kind of person, but I'm not very religious, so I'm just trying to follow Jesus, who also wasn't very religious. So, no, not really. They go, well, yeah, because we were wondering, because you talked about Jesus all the time, you talk, talk about Jesus very personally, but you sounded kind of Christian, but not Christian, and we're Jewish, and we're, we're always really offended when Christians try to proselytize us, but we are so attracted to what you've said. I mean, Jewish person after Jewish person after Jewish, Jewish, Jewish person said that to me. Mormons say that to me. Muslims say that to me. We go all around the world. Let me tell you about uh, El Jazeera. I can't remember what I told Kirk to tell me, but he said I kept changing stories last year. So I don't think I told you this story about El Jazeera. You know what El Jazeera is? The El Jazeera is the biggest Arab uh, television station in the world. El Jazeera, which is based in Qatar, in the Gulf, in Doha, Qatar, flew me over uh, to to, to offer me a job. They wanted me to do a weekly talk show on East, West, Arab, American, Muslim, Christian issues, and that I'd be the host. And I, I don't know how that happened because I've never been on a talk show. I've never been a host of a TV station, but they found me. They flew me over there. So we're sitting in the boardroom, and we're in this room with 12 Arab men with the white dish dashes and the things on their head and looking very Arab because they, they were. They were. <laughs> and then me sitting there looking kind of like I look, and uh, so we're talking about this show and what it would be like, and you know, we're going around and around. You ever been in these meetings where it just kind of goes around and around and around? Nobody could decide. So finally, the chairman of the board of Al Jazeera Television stood up. It's the little flame. It's now supposedly the most recognized symbol in the world that just overtook Nike as the most recognized symbol in the world. The chairman of the board of Al Jazeera stands up, and he said, kind of like this, he hit the table, he goes, all right, Mr. Carl. He said, listen, if this is going to be your show, then you have to know what you want to do. Who cares what we think? Can you summarize your passion, what you want to do, what, would you, what you'd want this show to be in two or three sentences? Can you? And I go, oh, well, um. and then it came to me. I said, oh, actually, I can summarize it in one word. He said, you can summarize the passion and the purpose in, in one word? How would you do that? I said, well, let me try. He goes, okay, 
go ahead. So he's standing up, everybody all of a sudden, they're looking at me like, okay, and I said, Jesus. And it was like, it was like the air was just like sucked out of the room. Everybody kind of gasped and, and looks at me like this, and then, then they all turn to look at the chairman of the board, and he's just kind of, he's standing there, and then he goes like this, just like this. He was standing like this, he goes, that's perfect, that's perfect. And this is exactly what he said. He goes, because Muslims like and respect Jesus. He goes, Christians obviously like Jesus. He goes, Jews, um, well, anyway, he said, everybody <laughs> said, I just like that. I'm not making it up. That's just, I, I don't know what that even means. But he goes, everybody, well, pretty much everybody likes Jesus. He goes, that's, br- that's a brilliant strategy. We can focus the whole show on Jesus. And then everybody's kind of getting into it. And for like the next couple hours, we brainstorm how we could have a show that brings about East-West understanding and reconciliation and dialogue of Muslim, Christian, and, and Jewish stuff as well. We went back to that and focus on Jesus. I'm telling you, everybody likes him. One last story. Uh, we're, I spoke this year, and I've spoken a couple years at the, something called the Governor's Luncheon. So it's a little luncheon thing that uh, the governor of the state hosts every year in Denver. And there's a couple thousand people there, and all the mayors come, and Mayor Hickenlooper was there, and Governor Ritter, you know, this year and last year when I spoke. But this year I spoke, and I, you know, I, as you might guess, I spoke about, yeah, you know, that, that old, same old, same old. And so I spoke about Jesus, told a bunch of stories and whatever, and so I come back to the head table, and, you know, Chris and I are sitting up there with all these, you know, muckety mucks, and so, you know, Bill Ritter uh, leans over and goes, you know, good talk. I go, thanks. And then we're done. And it's like, you know, hangout time. In churches, we call that fellowship time, but everybody else just calls it the time after the talk. And so we're, t- so Mayor Hickenlooper comes up to me. He's the mayor of Denver, if you don't know, writing for governor. You probably know that. He comes up to me, and then he walks up to me, he starts talking to me, and then Governor Ritter, so Mayor Hickenlooper, Gov- Governor Ritter are right here, and I'm here. My wife, Chris, is talking to another friend over here. And Mayor Hickenlooper says, you know, I like that talk that and I talked about this kind of stuff. I actually talked about what I'm talking about here, but to a more secular audience. But I talked about Jesus the whole time. He goes, you know, Mayor Hickenlooper goes, you know, my wife is Quaker. He, you know, he's trying to build rapport with me. And I go, great. And he goes, yeah, I mean, it's, she's really serious about that. I go, great, that's awesome. I mean, Quakers are cool. I said, uh, I said, do you ever go to the Quaker meetings? And he goes, oh, you know, it's called a meeting. I said, yeah, I know a little bit about Quakers. You know, I haven't been myself, but I, I'd like to go. I mean, that sounds awesome. He goes, yeah, I go sometimes just to support her, but, you know, we went like this. And I go, I mean, wh- what? I mean, like, is it, you don't like it? Is it boring? Do you disagree? He goes, you know, they, yeah, it's not, it's not really. He says, but I don't really go over But, you know, you know, I really like the concept of the light. And they like they follow the light and stuff, and they're all it's all about the light, and that's really that's really it's kind of like what you're talking about. And I go, well, yeah, almost. I said, but you know, it'd be easier if you just gave the light the name. I mean, the light actually has a name. And he goes, well, what's that? I said, well, you know, I mean, did you hear my talk? And he goes, yeah, it did, he didn't. He didn't. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, I think he's a very bright guy, but he wasn't connecting that, you know. And I go, Jesus. Jesus, the, the, the name of the light is Jesus. It, it's got a, the light's got a name. So the Quakers worship the light, which is fantastic. So do I. And his name is Jesus. And he goes, come on like this. He goes, wow, I got to tell my wife that. That's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then so he was, I mean, he was standing here. He was just like this. And then Governor Ritter kind of interrupted. He goes, yeah, Carl, anyway, good job again. And, you know, I was a Catholic missionary with my wife in Africa for three years. Again, they're trying to build rapport with me. <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm not, I have a BA in history from the University of Colorado in Colorado Springs. I mean, not even like the real one, you know. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I don't have any money. I don't really have anything. And they're trying to like, like build rapport with me. Like, you know, I'm a Catholic. I was a Catholic missionary. I go, great. That's all. I said, that we, you know, our years in Lebanon, we met lots of Catholic missionaries. They were awesome. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he goes, I really liked what you said. That was really, really good. I, I like that part about not converting people. And I go, yeah. So, like, what do you think I meant by that? He goes, well, you know, I mean, Buddhist or Muslim or Hindu or Catholic or Protestant, whatever, it's all good. It's all good. And I liked, I liked what you said. I'm thinking, I didn't say anything about that, but...